I was going to ask you also a question that kind of relates to that. Um, name one unique difficulty that pops up during planning, and name a unique one that pops up during like game missions. Well, one during planning that we had um, this year was sponsorship. We were trying to get our budget all all figured out, and we had Toyota actually that was looking at sponsoring us. Oh wow! But that's as it keeps getting closer and closer and closer and we get to the point where we actually need to go and send all our orders off to be printed, mm -hmm. um, that appears to have fallen apart. Mm -hmm. So, and that was a major part in, say, what our designs for our shirts were, how many we were going to get, what what other things and, and swag that we were going to have made um, is based off that sponsorship and, and not knowing if we were going to have it or not definitely made that a challenge and delayed us on our printing because you don't want to print it too soon because then you won't have the money or you'll have the logos on there and then there you don't need them or you print it without the logos and then somebody sponsors you and then they don't have the logo on anything right. and they and then they're kind of hesitant to, to help you out again because they didn't get anything out of it so that that's an issue that we've run into they say timing is everything yeah and then as far as the during the game, um, in our last game, one of the issues that popped up, one that was surprising, was the amount of support things that we had to deal with, especially relating to some of the, the more basic rules or just kind of how some of the game mechanics worked. And the, the sheer amount of requests that we had and challenges and those type of things from players during the game was a bit of a surprise, and we hadn't we hadn't quite anticipated the full amount of work that we were going to have to do to respond to all of these support issues, all of these tag challenges or rule issues, or this guy looked at me funny when I was doing this, and so I shouldn't be tagged. Um, a bit of an exaggeration, but but the, the point was that there was a lot of a lot of issues like that, and a lot of things that popped up. Um, one that one very particular one that comes to mind was when we designed our ID tags for that first game. We printed them out with a line for the players to write in their HVZ ID because that was provided to them on the website. Mm -hmm. So we had them write those in. Well, the problem was that people couldn't read each other's handwriting. So they would give that tag to somebody else or to the zombie to tag them. Then the zombie would go to enter it and say, oh, this tag, this key doesn't work because they couldn't read it to enter it properly. So then that led to accusations of, though this person is using a, a fake code, they just made it up on the spot or whatever. And, and, and a lot of discouraging problems like that. And we later figured out that it was all due to, to having the codes handwritten. So this year they're all type printed. I'm glad you guys recognize your problems and you know <laughs> do things to deal with it. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know, I've seen uh, if you go to the HVZ main page, like the home page, mm -hmm. they have a little map, the Google map there, and on it it's like if you play HVZ, you can put like a like a marker there. Have you seen that? Yes. Yeah, and you notice like if you zoom in more, kind of get a little bit more detail. There's like a bunch of games on the East Coast, on the eastern side. Like if you split the USA mm -hmm. and have on the eastern side, and on the western side, the number starts to like go down quite noticeably. Um, why do you think the west side of the USA hasn't really embraced this game yet? Well, the main reason, one of the main reasons I believe is that the game's still fairly no, new as far as um, events on college campuses. It's only started in 2005 mm -hmm. and it did start on the east coast, Groucher College. Right. Um, so I think it spread a lot from there from friends going to somebody's campus, seeing it, bringing it to their own campus and did a lot of viral spreading like that and it's only more recently starting to take off where people just find it online or hear about it or see videos from it and then see it start to spread. Um, definitely I think it's going to start to take off here in this area with these larger games um, taking place to where other campuses are going to see it and going to want to be part of it and I think that's going to cause it to grow here. Um, the other part is I think we have some more of the, the 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 conservative colleges in terms of administration and 
fear of gang activity, um, those, those types of concerns in the administration and school level that aren't as m much of a concern back east um, uh, where, where it developed and you have a lot of liberal arts colleges and things along those lines where the administration is really open to trying new events um, and, and that's, that I think is another major part of it. That's a great observation. I didn't really uh, notice that quite a lot of the liberal arts colleges in the East. I was, my reason was more about like, kind of like the culture mm -hmm. here, and which you mentioned um, gang violence and uh, conservative stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess we kind of had uh, the same idea there. Um, next question. Are there any uh, special or unique rules you guys kind of use here? Um, there are a few. One that we did have to uh, modify, unfortunately, was the original game calls for players to remain on campus. That it poses a limit on if you're, you have to leave campus for more than 24 hours, then you can't play. Um, and the main, the main part of that is to keep people in play, to keep them active, to make it so that the humans can actually be attacked and have to figure out how to survive mm -hmm. with the zombies. Um, but seeing as Cal Poly is such a commuter campus, we have over half of our student body doesn't live on campus. So we, we couldn't necessarily use our rule because a lot of those people have a work, a lot of those people live quite far away. Um, so for them to drive to campus, to be here for a few hours a day, um, if they don't have class is, is a bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Also, we don't particularly have anywhere for them to stay if we wanted to say, well, you need to stay here on campus overnight. Um, we don't have a lot of that lined up yet to where we'll be able to, to have somewhere to house them. Uh, the other one is we have a lot of stairs on campus. Right. Stairs are a big safety issue because people running and trying to do other things while they're going up or down stairs tends to cause people to fall. Mm -hmm. So we had to, to make a little bit of a custom rule for that um, to protect players from stairs and from themselves. So. Uh, that, that was an, an interesting one that we had to develop mid-game. What is that rule? Because I've noticed uh, Mount Sac has kind of like stairs. No, yeah. Adidas come out stairs too, so. So the way that we worked that was, as opposed to making them just safe zones or no play zones, because that would make it very difficult to um, get around campus, especially during a fight, because you wouldn't be able to go and use stairs. Mm -hmm. um, but we said that while you're on the stairs, you can't, tag, be tagged, stun or be stunned. You're, you're essentially safe on the stairs, mm -hmm. but you cannot loiter on stairs. While you're playing, if you go on stairs, you have to either go up the stairs or go down the stairs. You can't go halfway up, turn around, and come back down. You, you have to go and either go all the way up, all the way down, and while you're on them, your your place suspended. So you can take your time and walk up if you need to, um, you can run up if you want, but um, it's mainly, it's all focused around player safety. Definitely can agree with that. Hmm. Let's see, what are the questions? We're almost done with this interview, by all the right. way. It's coming to an end. So earlier you mentioned um, you wanted to maybe get something with a radio club in the game, yes. and maybe uh, you're trying to get something with, the, or I think you do have something with the uh, safety club, what was the name of that club? The safety that is or? the... Um, Emergency the, the disaster preparedness, disaster preparedness. Okay. group on campus, and that's actually the administration level group um, with with professional staff members. It's interesting oh, nice. working with us. Could you like give us a hint? Any like one more surprise? Any got anything else in store? Um, well, we are working on um, doing something with a haunted house. Oh wow! We're not we're not sure, but um, we're looking at doing that with one of our missions as well. So. That's fair. Wow, you got a lot. Of, you got a lot of kind of left-wing, you know, out there ideas. But it's very interesting at the same time. All right. So, uh, where do you see Cal Poly Humans versus Zombies going in the future? Do you think like Nerf blasters will be allowed? In um, game play? I I would think that they would um, eventually, especially with the uh, with the reception I initially had when I was just feeling it out. Mm -hmm. um, I think it. I think it will happen. I think it's just a matter of getting enough campus support getting enough awareness of what Humans vs. Zombies is, building up enough um, enough people. So I think that will 
come along and develop eventually as, as long as somebody's willing to push it. Um, the big question for me is how humans or zombies will take off, not from next year, but the year after that. After the initial moderator team of myself and Alec Baldwin and um, Malachi Unland, our, our new moderator from this year, how it will survive after we leave. Um, because we have to bring in a new set of moderators and a new lead person mm -hmm. and, and the main fear with, with any event like this is, is whether or not they will be up to the challenge and be willing to put the same amount of effort in so that you don't see the game disappear or just kind of decline in quality but to see it actually continue to improve. That's all for the best then. <laughs> well is there anything else you want to say to the viewers? Um, I think that pretty much does it unless that the, if you are at Cal Poly, you should uh, definitely consider playing, getting all your friends to come and play. Because um, as I was saying, the more people we have, the better. So. Alright, thanks Garrett. That's uh, Garrett Porter, the head organizer of Humans vs. Zombies Cal Poly Pomona, and I'm Basic Nerf. Catch you guys later. Thank you.